All right, handy dandy ground school. <laughs> a lot of times I teach people that don't have algebra or calculus or any of the other uh, understandings of some of this higher math. We don't really need it when you're flying gliders. You need to learn the concept of what's going on. And this is a flight polar. And a flight polar is nothing more than they took a glider in still air. They flew it at 40 and they measured how much the sink rate was. And then they flew it at 60 and measured the sink rate and 80 and 100 and, and whatever. And each time they plotted it on a course in still air. And then this was the result that they measured um, theoretically or, or physically uh, for a given aircraft. Now, if we look at this speed right here, the um, line parallel to this origin here, that would be the least amount that this aircraft will sink. And this is the corresponding speed for the minimum sinking speed. This is the amount of uh, sink rate that you'll have for a given speed. So if I fly in this situation, 38 miles an hour, whatever it is, 38 knots, um, I will sink the least. I will be in the air the longest in still air. And if I'm trying to stay up the longest, that's the speed I want to fly to beat the other guy. If he flies a little faster, he'll sink a little faster. He'll be on the ground earlier. Faster he flies, the more he sinks, the further he's on the ground faster. Now, when I land on the ground, at this speed, I'm not very far away from my original origin. However, if I fly a little bit faster, I'll sink a little bit more, but I'll go a lot further. And the relationship between those two gives me this thing called best L over D in still air. It's a tangent line from the origin of the uh, uh, polar. This is our flight polar. Origin of zero sink or, or um, lift and zero headwind or tailwind in still air, I receive this result. So this guy will fly further. This guy might be a mile away from where he was. This guy might be three miles away from where he was. If I fly faster, I create more drag. I sink faster. I'm in the air less, so I will not be as far. So given the distance of those three pilots, one flying at minimum sink might make it a mile. A guy flying at best L, L over D might make it three miles. And a guy flying faster might make it two and a half miles. That's kind of how this polar works and the math will work. All we need to do to find out what the speed to fly for a given condition is, is change the origin. So if I have more of a tailwind, I can move the origin this direction, at which point the new origin to the new line will have me flying slower. If I have a headwind and I'm over on this side of the puzzle, it'll have me flying faster, depending on how much headwind or tailwind I have. If I have a lift down on this end or sink, if I have lift, basically the new speed to fly is minimum sink. And if I have sink, the new speed to fly is the tangent line down here, which it was straight and tells me the speed I want to fly. If I have a headwind or a tailwind and a given speed, so let's go headwind and, and some sink, I'm flying faster. If I have tailwind and some sink, I'm flying slower. And this speed, depending on my conditions, where the origin is, is a function of speed to fly to get the furthest over the ground. So I change the origin. I'm going to zoom in down here. So all I do is change the origin to where I want to start to find out my best L over D. And this will get me my best L over D by best length to get to this next thermal or the field or home as my speed to fly to get the maximum L over D for a given condition to get to my goal, whether it's the next thermal or back to the airport. McCready is different. The way a McCready ring is created was they took the polar speeds and they put them on a whiz wheel, a, a speed ring, a circular slide rule on your variometer. So if I'm flying 40 miles an hour, my vario in still air will read this many feet per minute of sink. Click, click right there. 
And if I'm flying 60, I sink more. And if I fly 80, I sink more. And 100, I sink more and sink. And the faster I go, the more I sink. So if I am in still air and I'm flying 120, I should be sinking this speed right here. Oops, sorry. If I'm flying 120, I am sinking this fast. Now, if I'm not sinking that fast, the air that I am in must be different. Let's use a better speed. Let's pretend I'm cruising along at a handy dandy 60 miles an hour. Sorry. If I'm flying at 60 miles an hour and my variometer, my actual needle here, um, this needle here is reading only right there. That tells me that I'm in air that's lifting this much as I'm cruising through it. That's the creating a netto event for your total energy type event for your given um, airspeed in a crappy old um, trainer aircraft that doesn't have good instruments in it. I can use my McCready ring set for zero to read my polar and know whether I'm going up or down in the air that I'm traveling in. The use of a McCready ring is really for racing. Paul McCready, super genius. He wanted to figure out if he was glider one, glider two, or glider three, depending on what speed he flew to get to this next thermal, was a function of the strength of the next thermal. So if the strength of the next thermal, let me get down here a little bit. If the strength of the next thermal is really strong, it makes sense to fly faster to get there. So he gets there sooner. So he can start climbing earlier, get to the top of this cloud quicker, and then get to the next cloud. Whereas if he flies too fast, he'll get there lower. He'll spend more time climbing and he'll be behind the guy that flew the correct speed. And the guy that flew slow and got to the thermal higher will be so slow getting there that this guy already got to the thermal and already started climbing and is above him before this guy, G1, even gets there. So McCready was a function of how fast do I fly to get to the next thermal's average climb rate so I spend the least amount of time um, in that thermal to get to the maximum height to be able to leave and go to the next thermal. That's McCready. He was completely about racing. The problem we have with the McCready setting in some sailplanes and some pilots, if they are flying the McCready speed, they are trying to get there faster. And if they do not adjust this speed during the flight for the given changes, a lot of times this thermal is too far away or they don't get there. Or they don't know where it is. So they will spend time trying to get there and they'll end up what we call the, the divot here is they'll get on the ground. They'll be too low before this nice, happy, big thermal. They'll be down here in this little area of this thermal and they might not have the skills to be able to get to the thermal, find it, center it, and move on. So McCready is really a speed setting. Speed to fly is a maximization of your distance over the ground. And it's all relative to this polar, which is the mathematical and or physical measurement of an aircraft in still air, and then adjusted for whether you have lift or sink. Hope that gets it done. See you.